All right, it's time to talk more about crime because Channel 12 sure isn't. <laughs> they did talk about this horrible fire, uh, but other than that, not a whole lot of crime here at all. Once again, missing out on a lot of the crime going on. and uh, we got to talk about it. Let's get to the first thing that we have. Two wanted after a road, ra- road rage incident in Suffolk County. And most of these, of course, happened in the middle of the island. So police investigators on Long Island are seeking the public's assistance as they attempt to locate at least two bikers who were involved in a road rage incident that left a Jeep damaged. An alert was issued by the Suffolk County Crime Stoppers as detectives looked to track down two people who damaged the Jeep on Woodside Avenue in Medford uh, between 3.50 p.m. and 4.30 p.m. on Saturday, February 12th. So it was broad daylight. According to police, a group of between 20 and 30 riders. This is a big problem, particularly in the middle of the island. Uh, You have these these groups of of people uh, on dirt bikes and ATVs. So this group between 20 and 30 riders were on dirt bikes and ATVs on Route 112 near Woodside Avenue when two of them were involved in an incident with the occupants of a Jeep Renegade. It is alleged that the two riders, one on a red dirt bike, one on a blue dirt bike, damaged the side view mirror and door of the Jeep when it was traveling east on Woodside Avenue. This is like shades of that incident that happened in the city with a similar uh, group of people. Uh, so Investigators said that they are looking for information, video, or photos of the incident as they continued the search for subjects. Cash reward had been, has been offered for information that leads to any arrests. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, they're basically just terrorizing people on the roads here uh, and uh, on the loose, basically, t- 20 to 30 people. Um, and the police have, like, no control over this. Um, so let's uh, go to the next crime that we have. Uh, 18-year-old accused of pointing a pistol at a police officer on Long Island. Again, Channel 12 didn't cover any of these stories. But that's why so many people are leaving Channel 12. A lot of people are leaving. Um, heard about, uh, uh, heard that Marissa Sarbach has left. A lot of people have left. Uh, and uh, it's, you know, because they're not a news station. And they're just gearing to a certain demographic now. They don't really cover the news anymore. Uh, at least the Long Island division. So an 18-year-old man was charged with attempted murder after authorities said he pointed a pistol at a police officer on Long Island. Pretty serious. You'd think Channel 12 would cover this, right? Nope. David DeBose of Uniondale was ar- arrested following the incident that happened in Baldwin at 8.50 p.m. on Thursday, February 17th. NCPD said officers tried to pull over a blue 2014 Hyundai that was traveling south on Park Avenue in Roosevelt because of a defective front headlight. The driver, identified as DeBose, refused to stop and drove to Valder Court where he got out of the Hyundai and ran away. Officers found DeBose trying to climb over a fence. When the officers approached DeBose, he pointed a pistol at an officer's chest. The post then tossed the weapon and continued running away, and officers were able to arrest him. Authorities said a loaded 45 caliber pistol was recovered at the scene. The NCPD said the Bose was charged with the following. First degree attempted murder. Second degree criminal use of a, a firearm. Second degree criminal use, possession of a weapon. Third degree criminal possession of a weapon. Criminal possession of a firearm. Menacing a police officer. Tampering with physical evidence. Fourth degree criminal possession of a weapon. Second degree menacing. Second degree obstructing governmental administration. Third degree unlawful fleeing of a police officer in a motor vehicle. Fourth degree criminal mischief. Third degree aggravated unlicensed operation. And operating a motor vehicle with registration suspended and multiple traffic violations. Let's hope he is not let out. <laughs> Let's hope he is not let out. I, well, it doesn't say that he did get let out. So I think I, 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 don't, I don't think he was let out. Got a bank robbery again. Another bank robbery. This is a city bank. Uh, located at, it happened 2 p.m. on Saturday, February 19th at the Citibank, located at 1075 Northern Boulevard in Flower Hill, according to the Nassau County Police Department. Police said the suspect gave the teller a note demanding money while displaying a handgun. The teller complied, and the suspect ran away from the scene with the money traveling west through the bank parking lot. There are eight employees present, no customers in the bank at the time. NCBD said no injuries were reported. The suspect is being described as a black male with no age description provided. He was about six feet tall with an average build. He's wearing a gray, a light hooded sweatshirt, light colored sweatshirt, light qu- colored. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, he was wearing a light colored hooded jacket. It's like a tongue twister. I don't know. I can't say that. Black pants, black gloves, and a black face mask. So uh, there you go. Another crime. And no, none of these crimes have happened on the South Shore. None of them. This is, I don't know why they bring that up. That happened in Westchester County. 
Let's see. We got another one here. Woman who made 70000 in unauthorized charges and with a legal handgun. Again, with the guns. Um, a woman on Long Island who allegedly made more than $70,000 worth of unauthorized charges on her company's credit card was busted with an illegal gun in her truck during an investigation into her misdeeds. In Suffolk County, also responded to Cassone Landing, Cassone Leasing, on Lakeland Avenue in Ronkonkoma shortly before 11 a.m. on Thursday, February 17th, where there was a report of an employee making charges on a credit card, a company credit card without proper authority. It is alleged that Nikki, T- Nikki Naylor, age 58, made charges in excess of $70,000 on the company card, which prompted an investigation by the police. During that investigation, police had officers located a loaded 9mm Smith & Wesson handgun in her truck for which she had no New York State permit to carry. She's a resident of Ar- Van Buren, Arkans- Arkansas. Charged with grand larceny, criminal possession of a firearm, criminal possession of a weapon. She was held and scheduled to be arraigned in the first district court in Central Iceland on Friday, February 18th, and probably released. This is the first I heard of this. Channel 12 didn't even cover that. They didn't cover that at all. That's pretty serious. Again, uh, with the illegal guns again. It's, 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 it's ridiculous. It really is. Stealing wire. This guy stole wire from a Home Depot in Suffolk County. Happened in 5025 of Jericho Turnpike in Comac. The man was approached by an employee in the parking lot, and he drove away. So shoplifting. Driving a blue Subaru Forester with gold New York State license plate. Described as six foot two, 190 pounds. And that is his picture right there. And another shoplifting here we have... Duo wanted for stealing 620 items worth of items from Suffolk County Lowe's. Uh, this happened at the Lowe's in Comac. Again, Comac. Stole copper wiring from Lowe's on the North Service Road. The, thre- the theft occurred at approximately 3.50 p.m. on Sunday, January 16th. Investigators said that the stolen items had an estimated value of $620. And that is the person there. Uh, that is their image. Oh, but we're not done yet. There's more crime. Uh, no, we'll get to that later. Let's talk about uh, the city here. Uh, actually, we're going to lo- go to Laura Uli because it says here, four people were stabbed inside the subways in New York City. Uh, M- NYPD reported five people were stabbed. Five people actually stabbed in the inside the subways. From Friday evening to Sunday evening. This came after the mayor announced a new campaign. So uh, this is from Laura Uli. Uh, and there's also more stuff uh, going on. Uh, that, as you can see, armed robbery in Whitestone. Fire at home in Fresh Meadows. Bad accident in Floral Park. Uh, and also, Key Food in Glen Oaks is closing. Key Food Supermarket located inside the Glen Oaks, so- uh, Glen Oaks Shopping Center is closing. Uh, at least they decided not to review, renew, and also that Burlington store has also not renewed the lease. So we're going to have to look at this on the map. That's an area that's being redlined. Glen Oaks is nearly done. The fate of Glen Oaks, which used to be a nice, uh, actually almost upper middle class area, is now turning into a ghetto. Very quickly, it has turned into a ghetto. Uh, so yeah, the mayor here is saying he's going to uh, have mental health teams, more police enforcement, and this is good news. They say they're gonna they're going to uh, tackle the homeless problem, and uh, they say that they're gonna have uh, they're gonna say that there's gonna be a clear mandate to enforce the MTA rules, and uh, they were they will be in, basically enforcing all these things, uh, and people who may be considered a danger may be committed uh, against their will. So it's this is this is good news, but the crime is still occurring in the city right now. There's a lot of talk going on. Uh, and, you know, he's telling people to end the work from home. It's killing, it is killing the economy. It's killing the middle of the aisle. It's killing Manhattan as well. People do need to get back to the office, but they also have to feel safe. Uh, and uh, so far, the city is still very dangerous. Uh, and I know it takes time, but at least, yeah, I'm hearing a lot of tough talk, but let's see some action. Let's see some results. Uh, by the beginning of March, let's start seeing these, these, these violent homeless people taken off the subways, off the streets, and committed. All right, and that that is what needs to be done at, at this point. Uh, uh, the problem is that we've closed a lot of those type of facilities, so still 
the mayor is talking about getting rid of them, but where are you going to put them? That's that's a bit of a problem. Uh, I want to just talk about this because uh, this is a major crime that happened actually in Jersey that I want to talk about here. Uh, and it, it, there's a major accident uh, that happened here. Uh, a Pennsylvania man who fled the scene of a three-car accident has been arrested. The crash happened around 6 p.m. February 13th at the intersection of Route 70 and Colonial Drive. This is an area in Manchester that sees a lot of accidents. So according to the police, Roy DeRonde Jr. of Kingston, Pennsylvania, was speeding down State Highway 70 on the westbound shoulder when he ran the red light. He went to the intersection, hitting a Jeep, Cherokee, and a Mercedes-Benz. His car crashed into a utility pole and went into flames. Both DeRonde and the passenger... Fanny Kinster of Kingston, Pennsylvania, fled the scene on foot. Kinster was later found and transported to Community Medical Center for treatment. The driver and passenger of the Mercedes-Benz Benz identified as Richard and Kathy Zelensky from Tom's River. Uh, and the driver of the Jeep Cherokee was identified as Grace Pulley of Manchester. Um, it doesn't say if they were injured or not. Uh, around 5.18 p.m., the Manchester Police Department received a tip from the Manchester EMS saying they store the mail fitting description of the suspect. So my Manchester EMS reported, and they were, they 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 and witnessed a man near the headquarters, near Colonial Drive, jump the fence into Leisure Village West Community, and then police later received several calls that this guy was trying to knock, knocking on doors and asking to uh, call a, a taxi for him. Police arrived on scene and determined that Durande was in the area between. Huntington Drive, State Highway 37 West, Colonial Drive, and Buckingham Drive. It's interesting how the articles in Jersey like are much more detailed compared to the ones on Long Island. Uh, a perimeter was created using all available manpower. Officers were able to track several sets of footprints in the snow while the Ocean County Sheriff's Department K-9 units were dispatched. The Toms River Police Department provided additional support units to assist with securing the perimeter as well. Police later discovered that DeRonde received a ride from within Leisure Village West community and traveled to the area of Leisure Village East in Lakewood. Officers arrested him at a home in that community that instant. This guy is really slippery, man. DeRonde was charged with assault by auto, eluding, leaving the scene of a crash, resulting in injury, hindering apprehension and obstruction of justice. Um, and the investigation of the trash, tr crash is ongoing, but at this point, the disregard of a traffic control device at a high rate of speed is the contributing and this accident caused a pretty large power outage too that affected I think a thousand of customers because he hit a pole with this guy right here. Let's hope that he they didn't let him out of jail in New Jersey. I don't think they did. Uh, but uh, there you go. Some of the example of uh, what's going on. Um, you know, is a crime. Uh, obviously, some crime in Jersey. But you can see everything that we went into here. Uh, none of these things have happened in any of the enclaves, uh, and people just want to get into the enclaves and. Not every single enclave is uh, on the South Shore. There are some that aren't. There's some that are sort of toward the South Shore, but that are not. Um, you know, I, I mean, I consider North Wanto and North Belmore an enclave area now, too. Plain Edge. Uh, but as we go further east, uh, Holbrook is becoming an enclave, too. So this area right here in Holbrook right here uh, is becoming an enclave, too, believe it or not. Um, you have Sayville right by it. Uh, it's a lily white area. The demographics are fairly mainly white, and you know that's where everybody wants to move to. I don't want to show you a picture here uh, from uh, this area right here, Henry Boulevard and Broadway Avenue. Um, this I put I put this up a while ago here uh, because it just shows you that people are just fighting to get into these enclaves. This is a line for a tiny little house. People are going to bid up a tiny little house on this street here just because uh, of the demographics in the area. I, I never see anything like this in Mineola. Uh, we, we don't have lines for people trying to move into houses in Mineola. Uh, but Holtz, Holbrook is a lily white area. Um, and uh, while not on the South Shore per se, it's an area that's generally been chosen to be uh, an enclave now. You know, So this is, where it, this is where they were, right around Henry Boulevard and Broadway Avenue. This is the street here. Uh, and this is the house they were looking at, I think. So, uh, yeah, that, that little house right there. Uh, that's how ridiculous it's gotten. Uh, just, you know, this is now, this area is now turned into an enclave. But you can see it's taken care of. Oh, I don't see any potholes on the road. Uh, there's a, that's an old street view. Can I get the new one, please? You can actually see how it's changed. Uh, how it's, how everything has gotten kind of taken care of. So you see new poles. Streets taken care of. 
Uh, and even that house. Look at that. We're going to go back before it was an enclave. Let's go back to the street view from 2017. All right, we're going to go back before it was an enclave. You could see the older part. Well, actually, no, they had newer poles back then, too, I guess. But let's see that. That street sign was fixed. You can see that. Yep. You can see it just looks like it's fixed up more, all right? Because these people are moving in. And when I, you know what I mean by these people? Uh, you can clearly see uh, the demographic here uh, that's what, that wants to move into that area. And that is moving in. Uh, they're all, basically, any area on Long Island that is a majority white and is close to the South Shore or on the South Shore is going to get, you know, you don't see that in Mineola. Uh, you know, uh, people have told me, oh, that that uh, building, that new uh, Morgan Park building is full. Well, I, I I was walking by the Morgan Park building and I looked in one of the windows and honestly, this is like uh, one of the apartments here. It looks like a mess. It looks like it's an Airbnb. Uh, it looks like these are being rented out as Airbnbs. I mean, why why is all this stuff piled up like this? I mean, it's just it's just another sign of what's going on here. And you know, when we've got when we go over this crime update. Uh, and you go where all the crimes have happened. They have all happened in the middle of the island towns, um, middle of the island towns that are not near the South Shore. Uh, and uh, all all the towns, a lot of these towns are diverse as well. You know, it's uh, you know people are just lining up and to get into these little enclaves, and they're all just trying to price us out. That's what's going on. Uh, this is what we're up against. Uh, meanwhile, the crime does continue, uh, and uh, this is what this is what we have to deal with here. Classic example of it here. All right. Bank robberies. Comac. Uh, Comac's too far north. Nope. Got to be near the south shore. That's where it's taken care of. You know, and if we can look at the Holbrook's demographic. Well, I'm not going to bully you. Well, I, I guess I could look at Holbrook's demographic. Let's see. Well, let's see. I can probably go to city data. Let's see if we can find that. And then I'll wrap that. I know we're kind of going off topic here, but it's just... Uh, Let's see what we got here. If this has a uh, median, look at look at how much it's jumped for. Oh my gosh, estimated median. Oh yeah, six figures. So I see it's become an enclave already. Six figure income there. Median household income in 2019, 111,052. Um, let's see race. There you go, majority white. There you go. Let me put Miniola in here, and you'll see what I mean. I know we're kind of going off topic here. I do apologize, but let's uh, do that. Mineola city data. Compare that. It's my town. Uh, let's see what we got here. All right. Well, actually, we made it up into the six figures, too. Now it's 102, 936. Let's look at our demographics. Not as diverse. Only 63% white. So it's more diverse here. And that's what I mean. Everybody wants the lily white area. You know, it's ridiculous. Uh, I wish we had that kind of attention in Mineola, people wanting to move to Mineola, but uh, that's not happening. So that's going to be it for this uh, this crime update. I'm a little off topic. I do apologize toward the end there, but I had to talk about that because, again, this crime affects where people move and people see where the crimes are happening, and they don't want to live in those places, and I, I can't blame them. Uh, but anyway, that's going to be it for this update. Thanks for watching.